We're moving on now to our final award for the night, and it is Supervisor of the Year. Now, Julie Webster from Avant is going to say a few words about why they're supporting this award. Please, Julie, if you'd like to come forward. Distinguished guests, doctors, ladies and gentlemen. 120 years ago, on the 12th of April, a small group of doctors got together in Sydney, each putting in a guinea into a hat to create the first medical legal defence organisation. Today, Avant is Australia's largest MDO, proudly supporting over 60,000 medical students and doctors. And Avant and the New South Wales AMA have had a very long-standing relationship. The provision of the best medical legal advice and defence outcomes continues to be at our heart. But today we offer much more. In 2012, we launched the Doctors in Training Research Scholarship, an initiative of our Doctors in Training Advisory Council. We were pleased to support the important role that research has in the community and in the careers of our young doctors. Last year, we attracted over 100 high quality applicants, which encouraged our board to increase the value of the scholarship this year to $300,000. I'm also pleased to say that one of our recipients is actually in the room tonight. Applications for 2013 are now open, and I would encourage you all to go to our website and review the stories of last year's recipients and the application criteria and consider the role that research may have in your own career. We also never lose sight of the dedication and valuable role that our senior members and that of the profession have in mentoring and supervising young doctors. And it is with this in mind that we are honoured to be sponsoring tonight's Supervisors Award. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julie. And I have the envelope here. The Supervisor of the Year is Associate Professor Denise Lonigan. Now, let me read for you something about Denise Lonigan, Associate Professor Denise Lonigan, remarkable oncologist, caring, thoughtful person with a keen sense of humour, devoted herself to her work as a radiation oncologist. Her greatest strengths were her holistic, compassionate patient care and the kindness, support and wisdom she gave to her colleagues. It's a glowing tribute, but sadly I'm, I'm reading from her obituary. Denise Lonigan passed away last year. We are very lucky to have tonight to accept the award a man who spent more than 30 years of his life with her, her husband, Dr. Lewis McGuigan. Please give Lewis a big round of applause. <laughs> Lewis, thanks so much for joining us. It was very emotional for me to read uh, Denise's obituary. Um, I read it on the Sydney Morning Herald website. I did also have a bit of a chuckle when I read one bit on her early years, and it said, quote, after completing her high school at Lochinvar Convent, she did her medical degree at the University of New South Wales and St George Hospital Clinical School. Little did she know at the start of her course she would not only find the medical interest that would steer her later career, but she would also meet her lifetime partner, Lewis McGuigan, a strapping chap with a keen sense of humour. Now, I quickly raced to the bottom of the page to check that you hadn't written this yourself. <laughs> and you hadn't. Clearly, medicine was, was a common passion for, for both of you from the, the, the first moments that you met each other. Come on in. Yes, uh, we met in uh, first year at university. We didn't get married until our um, final year after we'd finished our exams. But uh, we were always very passionate about medicine. Denise had a great sense of humour as well. She, well, she had to have that because she married me, really. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we had a wonderful, incredible life together. And uh, I'm extremely lucky to have married her. You must have had a passion for it because you're McGuigan from the McGuigan Wine Dynasty. So you had the choice to go into a life of wine. Yeah. <laughs> you must love medicine. <laughs> Yeah, I must say my second choice was enology, so uh, if I didn't get into medicine, I was, I was going to do that. But uh, medicine has been a wonderful career. Um, it's a very difficult career, but it's a career with incredible um, um, values and importance. And it, when you get towards the end of your career, like I have, am now, you can realise that you've 
you've made a difference, and Denise made a huge difference. What do you remember? You met, you were 18, 19 years old when you met. What do you remember of the young Denise? Well, she was, um, she's a very beautiful girl. Uh, she uh, always had charm and dignity and style and um, always was uh, wonderful to everybody she met and everybody who met her felt better for meeting her. We, we, we've met many good people tonight and the difference between those who've been nominated and, and, and won their categories, the difference between goodness or greatness and, and pure excellence, what is it that makes a, a great supervisor? Well, I've just got a few things to say in a minute, but um, Denise treated her um, trainees like apprentices, and she treated them like basically one of her children. And we had four wonderful daughters, and she brought them up into be extraordinary women. And she treated all her trainees like that. And when Denise died, the, her trainees uh, over the last 20 years, many of them wrote to me and said they were absolutely devastated that such a wonderful person had died and their mentor and their guiding light had gone. And uh, I think she has left a huge hole in many uh, great doctors' um, uh, hearts, really. It was also said by Jeff Delaney, who was, who was my student, her trainee, then became her boss, uh, uh, and a wonderful uh, young man and a great doctor and a great clinician. He said that uh, at her, one of the eulogies at her funeral, he said that um, if you weren't trained by uh, Alan Langlands in breast cancer management in New South Wales, you were trained by Denise Lonigan. So in fact, those two people trained everybody who does radiation oncology in breast cancer. And that's one of the great areas of, um, of development in the treatment of breast cancer. When I was a medical student, these women used to have horrible surgeries that were mutilating and now the surgery is r relatively minimal and the prognosis is so much better than it was then. But for someone who must have been so busy all the time with her work, uh, phrases are used in this obituary like no one recalls her ever saying no to a request and she didn't just take an interest in her patient's illness but also the patients as people, their life story and what, what, where they were going and what they wanted for themselves. Just an incredible amount of energy and dedication to the task. Yes, and that, that has its costs. Denise gave everything every day for 37 years, and um, she was exhausted by the end of it, I think, and uh, that has consequences, I think. She lectured at UNSW, won multiple teaching awards, completed a master, so she loved teaching yes. as, as much as she loved learning. Would that be fair to say? Well, she used to call her first years out there and from the University of Western Sydney her babies, and she treated them like uh, royalty, really. They... Um, she used to take them to lunch every time. She used to teach them and so forth. And she really took a real interest in them and taught them how to be doctors rather than uh, technocrats. And you've asked as part of this award that a donation be made to the Calvary Hospital. They have obviously touched well, you. Well, the, the lady who looked, helped look after Denise when she was uh, dying was a lady named Margaret Deacon. She was one of the best clinicians I've ever seen. And um, she was a nurse there. She was absolutely wonderful. She not only was compassionate, but she had sort of, she was a knockabout kind of person who you could sort of have a cup of tea with. She'd tell you a joke. She, um, I can remember when Denise was too sick to have her, own, have her a shower, she used to take her into the bathroom and sort of uh, give her a, a, a bath in the chair. And uh, there'd be bloody suds from one end of the, of the bathroom to the next. And Denise said to me, that Margaret, she washes too much. <laughs> So she was just a wonderful person. And I mean, people who really do palliative care well uh, have a gift. Mm. And uh, not many people have that gift. But when you see it, it's invaluable. Mm. You've, you've got four daughters. We're lucky enough to have three of them here tonight. I've met them, three yeah. beautiful, passionate, talented women. Do you mind me asking how you're all holding up? It must be difficult. Well, we try and get to tomorrow afternoon, really, and uh, take each day that comes. But when you, any child loses a, a mother, their heart's broken, but when you lose a mother like Denise, it's smashed. Uh, they're, all, um, they're extraordinary women. Denise raised, raised them wonderfully, and they were, we were intensely proud of all of them. And they'll, they'll, they'll put this in perspective and get on, but they'll never get over it. You've got a few words you want to say? I'd love to, thank you. Dr. Lewis McGuigan, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Minister, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I know you've heard quite a few speeches tonight, but 
I, I couldn't let this occasion go by without saying a few things. It'll only take a few minutes. I'd like to thank the New South Wales branch of the AMA for selecting my wonderful wife, Denise Margaret Lonigan, as the Supervisor of the Year. You have made an inspired choice. Denise was an extraordinary doctor, a superb mentor, and the best person I've ever known. Denise and I were in the same year. She commenced work as an intern on the 4th of January 1977, which seems a long time ago, and worked in the New South Wales Health System until her last day of work on the 5th of April 2012. She had one year off, 1983, in which she had our second daughter and passed two of her postgraduate radiation oncology exams. However, rather than me recalling Denise's life history, I would like to repeat the words of one of her trainees expressed to me in a letter of condolence after my wife died last year. In this letter, he spoke of Denise's last day at work, a day when she went in late, even though she had a bad headache and was feeling unwell. It was Holy Thursday last year, which is almost a year ago, and a registrar had planned a trip to Melbourne in the evening for the Easter break. These plans he abandoned. He said, In the last few weeks, a lot of people have been talking to me about the last day and missing my trip. But I guess when I left work that day, I knew I just witnessed something which would impact me for the rest of my life. I remember that day vividly because Denise was not feeling too well and had called me uh, about her inpatients. I told her one of the patients was not doing too well, which we had expected, and without hesitation, she said she would be in in the afternoon for a little while. Of course, a few hours ended up being the whole evening. The thing about the day which impacted me the most was I remember running around with Denise organising a CT scan at 5 p.m., waiting till 6 p.m. for the results, reviewing the scan for 30 minutes, Denise ringing multi multiple palliative care consultants to get their advice, then back to her office and again reviewing the scans with the medical oncologist, finally trying to see if there was anything to do we could, we could do for this poor girl. I know deep down Denise knew after seeing the scan for the first time that there was nothing we could do, and for many doctors, they would have just stopped after that, told the patient and gone home, but not Denise. I could see in her face how much she wanted to help her patient, which is a look I will never forget. I also remember standing in the patient's room when Denise spoke to this 29-year-old woman and her parents that night. The patient and family were at peace because they knew how much Denise cared about them and that, uh, and that without a doubt she had tried absolutely everything. Not to sound like a cliché, but it honestly felt like Denise was that family's guardian angel and that's why they were at peace. The young woman died peacefully in her sleep two days later. He goes on. As I think back over things in the last couple of months, I know I can recount multiple instances like this where Denise went up and beyond what I guess the majority of doctors would do. I guess it made me realise that the reason she was an amazing doctor was because she was an amazing person. She cared so much about everyone and I know personally, personally I have been blessed more than I deserved by her. One thing I always remember is whenever I would need to interrupt Denise from whatever she was doing on her computer and talk to her about something, I knew once she took her glasses off and put them down on the table and leaned back in her chair, I would listen more intently. Because whenever she did that, she was always about to give me really important advice, which more often than not was, about, was not about the specific issue we were discussing, but about how to have a good future career and how to balance that with home life. I will never forget how much she invested her time into me. My wonderful Denise was diagnosed with a brain tumour on Holy Saturday, two days after her last day at work. She died as she lived with grace, courage and dignity on the 13th of October last year. The New South Wales branch of the AMA has made an inspired choice for New South Wales Supervisor of the Year. She would have been embarrassed by winning this award, but my daughters Kate, Alexandra, Victoria, Stephanie and I are deeply appreciative. Thank you.